I want people to live their best life, right? I want people to, to see the positive in them and realize that when you get down um, and things are going rough, that things can always be a lot worse. And sometimes when you hit rock bottom um, and you feel like there's no place to go, the only way you can really go is up, right? And the only way you can do it... And, and Right. Good morning, everybody. Man, I forgot how good the music in that was. Yeah, that was amazing. I was going to say, I was jamming. I was waiting for like some vocals to come on and everything. (laughs) I I loved it. It was so good. All right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another cup of positivity. Today is a special festive cup. So we're going to, as you see, I got my Santa hat on. You may notice the studio looks a little different. I've done some decorating. So um, it's going to be pretty sweet. I have the super pleasure here of introducing an amazing gentleman today. I actually met Jamie a long time ago. Well, not a long time ago. It feels like it was a while ago. But back in September, when I was in my own kind of job search position before I started all this stuff, I connected with Jamie. And Jamie is a pretty incredible person. If you have been following him on LinkedIn, he's incredibly positive. He's out there trying to help people to get jobs. He's part of all types of interesting, positive things and movements. So super excited to have you on the podcast today, Jamie, have you out here to talk to everybody, maybe give us some useful things. I would do want to start off first because interestingly enough, I actually scrolled back into our chats on LinkedIn because I was like, man, how did we meet? Like what happened? It was through social Saturday, which is amazing. So for those of you who haven't jumped on that train yet, I highly recommend it. It's amazing. And like I said, it was the start of when I was actually looking for a job. And what the first thing that really stood out to me is you immediately were just interested in like, what was I doing? What was I looking for? What did I want out of it? So definitely one of the first things I wanted to ask you is how did you get into that position to like, where did you find that passion in helping people find careers and find jobs? Yeah. So great. First off, happy holidays to everybody. Thanks for joining us today, wherever you're coming from. Hopefully it's a merry, uh, merry Christmas, happy holiday, whatever you celebrate with your loved ones. Uh, thanks for being here today. And thanks for having me, Freeman. I appreciate it. Um, so yeah, so for the last 12 years, I've spent uh, time in several different Fortune 50 companies. And what I've done as a leader is I've had to hire people and build my own sales and operations teams, right? So I've done everything from resume reviewing people's resumes to interviewing people for my teams, helping people build better LinkedIn and reviewing their their LinkedIn to see how it's being optimized and how visible they are out there. So basically what I took everything that I've done the last 12 years and in April, I was most recently laid off from my most recent financial institution job. And I took that as a sign to say, you know what? Everything I've learned the last 12 years, something I've always wanted to do was helping others with their job search and becoming a career coach myself. But I never really had the time to do any of this stuff because I felt like I was working so many hours and didn't really have time to focus on me, right? So took that as a sign. And what I did was I came up with my company Jam Sessions with Jamie, which combines my love of music and how I used to sing in choir in high school. My family's big into piano playing and being in bands. And I took that love for music took the jam session side of brainstorming. And that's how I came up with jam sessions with Jamie. And I started doing things like, do you want to become a number one hit in the eyes of recruiters and hiring managers? Do you want to take your job search to the top of the chart? So everything kind of just blended really nicely. And then first people I met when I came back to LinkedIn was Jonathan Lee. And uh, if anyone doesn't know Jonathan, he's also really big into helping job seekers. And he was one of the pioneers on the social Saturday movement. So I spent time talking with him and said, well, how can I get myself out there more with my career coaching and different things. And uh, he just said to be more engaging with people's posts and, and get yourself out there, introduce yourself and just start making an impact and show up consistently. And that's what I did. And I started doing social Saturday then every, every week and people started coming to it. And then most recently I had started doing welcome Wednesdays as another way to connect during the week. And ever since it's been bringing people together between recruiters and, you know, job seekers. And I do my jam sessions with one for one hour for people who sign up and I help them out with resume reviews, interview practice, and uh, how to be, make a better LinkedIn profile. Man. And you started all that in April, you said? Yeah. So April is when, when I came officially back on the scene on LinkedIn. I had like less than 500 followers and just wanted to build and build and just kept being out there. And yeah, I just started the company about four months ago and I've been growing ever since. So it's been a, a fun ride and hopefully 2023 is going to even be a better year. That's impressive because for those of you who don't know, I'm going to uh, kind of 
boost you up a bit here. You're at 12,000 followers, I think, now on LinkedIn? 17, 17 but who's 17, count, who's counting, honestly, yeah. Who, <laughs> no, I, I, and I don't, it's, again, it's not about the numbers. It never right. is about the numbers. But I think what it shows, what the numbers show, is just how dedicated you have been to doing this. Like the fact that you started in April and now you have so many followers, so many people looking to you to find that useful information, like that really goes to show that you're just doing an amazing job. So from all of us, thank you so much for like what you're doing for people. I do want to ask as well, kind of what are some big wins you've seen in that time for people? Like, can you, do you have any cool success stories yeah, from, from so then? Yeah, so I've had a, a guy that uh, I started, uh, one of my first clients, actually, when I first started the business up, um, he reached out to me and we had a jam session together and I helped him build a resume and he was trying to break into the uh, to the health, to the Department of Health industry, basically trying to get a job, um, you know, local to him. So we did a, a resume review and uh, instantly he started getting more interviews and he just reached out. It took him a little bit longer to try to find the job he really wanted, but he just reached out to me about a month ago after I hadn't heard from him for a little bit and he said, hey, I just wanted to say thank Thank you so much for our jam session and just all the tips that you share on LinkedIn. Uh, I did end up getting a job with the Department of Health, and I'm super excited to start working. So uh, that was really cool. I, I hadn't talked to him, and we haven't followed up for a little bit. So just seeing that person uh, get a job right away. And then there was a, a female I worked with uh, earlier, uh, about a month and a half ago, who just got a job as well uh, after one of our jam sessions. And she got a job um, in the wireless industry uh, as a talent acquisition specialist, which is something she wanted to transition to. So yeah, there's been a lot of good success stories and it's been great. I just love seeing people take down their, their green open to work banners. It's awesome. Man, that's so cool. Do you have a number? Like, do you have, are you keeping track of how many people you've helped find jobs or how many people you've had in jam sessions? You know what? I really, yeah, I really should keep track of how many have actually had jobs, but I have helped <laughs> over a hundred people in general. If you look wow. at like my recommendations on my profile, uh, you can see everybody, you know, who's had a great jam session with me. And like I said, the thing that I do is I continue to follow up with them over time and just see how things are going. And when they, when they revamp their resume, they send it to me and I can give quick feedback and we just stay in touch that whole time. It's not like I'm a coach that just disappears once you're done working with me. Like I'm there throughout the long haul with you. Yeah. Do you think, I mean, I'm just going to dive into that a little bit because I do wonder, but before I do that, I do want to shout out a couple um, awesome people because yeah. there's a ton of people in the chat here and I don't want to leave you guys hanging in the chat as well. So um, for those of you who, who wish us Merry Christmas, man, I, I really appreciate it all and, and happy holidays again. I know it's not all about Christmas um, or I'm going to get into a little bit about that as well with you, Jamie, here a little bit later. Um, but Matt, Nora, Jack, Elizabeth, guys, thank you so much. And Elizabeth, yes, thank you for, thank you for uh, appreciating my hat. Uh, I've only got yes. a few more days to wear it before people look at me funny. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, just to, to, to riff back into you helping people find those jobs and interacting with them. How do you feel when you've done all that stuff? Like when those people message you and they say, Hey, Jamie, really appreciate the help you did. I got this job. I've taken my green banner down. What, what do you get inside when that happens? You know, I, I love the recognition and everything, and it's great, but I feel like this is just what I was meant to do. Like, I feel like my calling is coming here now and helping people with their job search. And for me, as a leader, what it's always been for me is not always focus on, I mean, yes, my self-development is so important, but what matters to me as a leader and helping people seeing the success from others, right? So anytime I could promote somebody from within that was on my team when I was working my jobs or anyone I could see somebody get to the level that they want to get to on LinkedIn or finally get that job that they've been trying to trying to get all these years. I mean, it's a great feeling just to see people get successful and, and turn everything around that's been a hardship in their job search, and then finally get that one yes and, and, be, and be feeling on top of the world. I mean, it's an amazing feeling. Yeah, it's so I think it's so important. It's definitely not something that's, you know, to be understated, right? Is how impactful and how just amazing it feels to to help people in that way, right? To know that you've really changed somebody's life. And that's I think that's what you're doing with what you're with what you're accomplishing for people. You know, finding the right job, finding the right career can really change somebody's life, right? It completely switch switch the 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 flip the switch. There we go. That's what I wanted to say <laughs> on that, right? So, um, yeah, super, super incredible. Um, with, with that, what is some of the biggest things that you tell people in their job searches mentality wise, we can get a little bit more into specifics, but mentality wise, what is some things to remember when you're out there job searching? Cause it can be hard sometimes yeah. to continually, I mean, I've been there, you send those emails out, you feel like 
I mean, I tracked it with probably over a hundred different places I've applied to in the past. Right. Some places ghost you, some places send you those lovely emails that are all the same, right? So we really thank you for your thing. Unfortunately, you do not yeah. quite fit, you know, and you're like, cool, right. thanks. So what are some things that you tell people to, hey, keep in mind during that that push? Sure. So I, I feel like if anyone knows, these last two years have really changed the landscape with COVID and everything and people being laid off and the job market's crazier than we've ever seen it, right? So uh, it can be very discouraging when you see those rejection emails come through and you're applying for all these places and they're saying, oh, you have great skills, but uh, we just don't think you're a great fit. You might think to yourself, well, I done all these things. I have all these great skills. Like, what is it? Is it me? Am I doing something wrong? And I just want to tell you, like, that's the way I used to think at first. But now if you flip the switch, like we talked about, and you kind of change that mindset, think of it this way. For every rejection email that you get, that company missed out on a great employee. So they missed out on you. Um, you didn't miss out on them. You know, they, they don't get you in their company um, and they, yeah, they don't get to see the great things you're going to do and, and the great person you are. So if you just kind of think that mindset and you think to yourself, look, all I need to do is get my one yes. Once I get that one yes and I get that job offer, all those no's that came before it, they seem like an afterthought at that point, right? You'll have a story to tell. You get to start writing your new chapter uh, in your story. And yeah, it's just that, like I said, you just have to kind of get that positive mindset and think, you know what, there's a lot of people find, looking for jobs right now and you're not the only one. And all you got to do is get that one yes and just think to yourself that it's going to happen and just stay consistent and don't give up. Stay on that grind. And this time of year, just take the time right now to get your resume in order, get your interview practice in order and, and enjoy your holiday and then hit 2023 hard and get ready to rock and roll. Man, I love that. And I love the subtle get rid of rock and roll there to the uh, attuned to the, the jam sessions with Jamie's. I see what you did there. there so go. good. Man, that speaks volumes to kind of how I think as well, right? Uh, definitely, I'm a huge advocate of that positive thinking. And it really goes to this mantra that I've had for a really long time that you need to look for the gold and not the dirt right? It's this beautiful metaphor when it comes to people who do gold mining, right? You dig through a lot of dirt to get to a piece of gold, but it's not the dirt that you look at. You look at the pieces of gold that you're finding along the way. And I think that's kind of attuned to what it is with the job search as well. Right. If you only focus on the no emails, the rejection emails, it's going to feel pretty daunting. It's going to feel bad. You're going to feel negative. You're going to kind of get lost in that gross, dirty spiral, right? But like you said, you're like, no, you just I love that twist that you gave it. Be like, no, no, they're not passing up on an opportunity for you, right? Like they're missing you. You're not missing right. them. Yep. And I think that, you know, when you find that right position, those are the jobs and the companies and the employers that really kind of want you and respect you. And you're going to feel like you're in that, that right space. So man, so good with, with that kind of thing. I do want to quickly ask as well, cause I, I want to give people a, a bit of a takeaway for, something that they can do really quickly. I don't want to like completely give away your secrets or anything, but um, what's one thing people can do this holiday season? Like you mentioned, get stuff ready for 2023. What's a quick tip that you see people kind of making a mistake on, whether it be in a resume format or a portfolio or getting ready for an interview? Like what's maybe kind of three quick, quick tips. Yeah, sure. And I just want to really quick shout out some comments here, if you don't mind. I see uh, yeah, go for Elizabeth it. Grace saying, uh, yeah, she always tells everyone to celebrate the small successes, those baby steps uh, get you to your end goal. So I love it. Yes, wins are wins come in all different ways. They come in small wins. They come in big wins. But yeah, you should always celebrate them no matter what. So I love that comment. Uh, Matt says the miracle is you, not the job you apply for. I love that. You're more than just your job title. I say it all the time. My, my best job title is being a father for a beautiful two-year-old daughter. So I don't yeah. even, yeah, I don't even work, worry about the, uh, the professional job titles anymore. It's all about me and my, and my development and my family. So I love that, Matt. Um, Jack says they will hire remote. Yep. There's a lot, still places hiring remote. Definitely. And then uh, LinkedIn user says great analogy, uh, analogy mining for gold uh, or opal. I love that. <laughs> uh, great takeaway. Yes. I love that. Uh, what you said there um, as well. So yeah. So uh, what we were saying before, some takeaways that you can take into heading next year. Um, I would say have a plan for 2023. It's okay for sometimes if you want to spray and pray when it comes to your applications and people just apply everywhere, but try to have more of a plan when you head into 2023. So think about maybe 10 different companies that you really want to work for 
and some of the job titles that really interest you. And what I would recommend doing is reaching out to people who work in those companies already in the jobs that you're looking to get into and just introduce yourself and ask them if there's anything, anytime that maybe they can have a quick coffee chat with you for 15 minutes of, of their time and pick their brain a little bit and find about how they got into the company, how they got into that position and what they, you know, how you guys can help each other out. And then once you build that relationship, you never know, that person may refer you for a job that opens up in that company. And now you have a referral from an actual employee, as opposed to just applying and crossing your fingers and hoping for something. So that's one thing on, on the LinkedIn side of things as term, as, uh, in regards to your resume, what I recommend people do in their job experience section is I see so many people that I meet for jam sessions that literally just list their responsibilities in their professional experience instead of their accomplishments and their achievements. You should always have your bullet points talk about the things that you've done really well in the company and some of your qualitative and your quantitative metrics. So they could be numbers in there, accomplishments, but that section should be reserved not just for your responsibilities because anybody could look at a job description and see what you do. What companies want to do is they want to see how have you helped that company and how is it going to translate to if they bring you in and you're going to be able to solve their pain points as well. Man, that was those were some pretty fire tips. I hope I hope everybody caught those. But yeah, it's so important. It's about relationship, right? I think that's what a lot of one of my first tips I got from somebody when I was job searching was that, and it was like you need to think about getting a job as getting into a relationship with somebody. And I love this metaphor that like you wouldn't ask somebody to marry you on the first date. And it needs to be the same way when you're searching for a job, right? You wouldn't just, you have to build that relationship. You have to, like you said, invite them for coffee chats, reach out to the other people who maybe aren't the hiring manager in that thing, especially if they're a side-by-side -side role with you. I think that's really huge, right? Like if yeah. you're an accountant or whatever, and there's other accountants on that, on that position, maybe reach out to them and chit chat with them, right? Really good. Awesome tips. And yeah, make sure that, that um, you're getting beyond just, these are the things I did, but these are the things that happened because of what I was doing. Very true. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Elizabeth had a, a couple of good tips here as well. I love that you guys in the comments are adding tips on top of this yes. guys. This is so good. Uh, Jack really quickly, yeah, hire yourself, start personal branding. If you're not doing it and you feel comfortable doing it, it's huge. I know yes. for sure the job I currently have, I landed because of some of the personal branding that, that I was doing. Um, the dedication I had on my LinkedIn came through and they're like, oh, wow, if you can commit to doing something like this, then you've got that ability to, to be dedicated to something. Uh, Elizabeth said, if you're having trouble getting into the exact position you want, consider solving um, for the job before. So yeah, answer like some questions that they might have for their job before you even apply to it, right? And put in your cover letter that you write to them. Be like, I've been looking at your website, for example, and I've noticed these things that you could change and it would increase the conversion rate, right? Um, that's the only example I have because I used to be a website designer. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's good. Um, and then Matt, sneaky incentive, God, get a referral uh, for them. And if the company has a re refer a friend, yeah. Yeah, always good so. to get a referral from them. And uh, yeah, I love the what you said about doing your research on the company beforehand, because a lot of times you want to make sure you're not real. They're not really just interviewing you for the job that you want. You're interviewing them at the same time. So you want to make sure it's a good fit for both ends because their values have to match your values. You don't want to get a job and be excited. And then you come in and ends up being a toxic workplace. And now you're dealing with the stress and different things and you're, you have to get out at that point. So you want to do your research. You want to look at what they do. Well, if you volunteer anywhere, if you do any volunteering yourself, um, see what they do on the community. What do they do for volunteering? Companies love when you can talk about the things that you're doing outside to help your community and how they know that they can ask you to help them out with their initiatives. And they love that community outreach as well as somebody who can do the job that they're asking you to do. Yeah, so good. I want to pivot a little bit to talking about a couple of things. Now you briefly mentioned as well that you, you obviously you have a daughter. Um, you run your own business as well. You're doing a couple other things that I want to get onto here in a second. But first, I want to just ask, so for those of you who don't know, well, you won't know because we've talked about this separately. <laughs> when I was talking to you, um, you've got all these great ideas, all these things you want to do and all this stuff you are doing. But you're doing it all while looking after a small kid. You're balancing having um, a girlfriend and running your full-time work. And you're kind of just making it all work. And one of the ways that I know you're doing this is you're like, I'm like on my girlfriend's laptop right now. I don't have an, my own office. Like we feel like we have to have everything figured out before we start doing things. And you're a prime example of that's not the case. 
just you can make it work. So what are some ways you're doing to kind of balance uh, family life, a business life, all of these things? Sure. Great question. So yes, I love what you said that a lot of people think they have to have all their ducks in a row before they start to do something. But if you've ever thought about starting your own business or doing something that you've always wanted to do, like take those baby steps, um, like Elizabeth said, celebrate the wins, right? So start somewhere, get your foot on the ground. And then as you start getting traction on what you want to do, then you can start getting the other things that are going to help you out with what you're, what you're trying to do. So you don't have to have everything at once. It takes time. Um, but for me, my daughter is my, my biggest, one of my, you know, my biggest inspirations for what I'm doing. Right. Um, and same thing with my girlfriend. I mean, family life is so important to me and just seeing my daughter at two years old and having all this time right now that I get to spend with her, not working a 40, 50 hour a week job right now. Like I get to spend more time with her. I get to come home and, you know, I get to be here at a normal time and eat dinner with her now. Uh, it's a great inspiration for everything I'm doing. And I just try to balance everything in succession. So I used to spend a ton of time on LinkedIn all the time, like glued to my screen. And now I spent a lot of time on there. But I've learned that, you know, without the people in my life and the support around me, if I was to spend too much time on here and I lose their support and my girlfriend says, you know what, I want somebody who's going to be supportive of me and be more in the moment it's not going to be a win for every, anybody. So I have to be spending time with them, uh, enjoy the nights where I can at home, uh, train, teach my daughter, play with her, with her toys. And, uh, you know, just have a lot of fun with her and just kind of balance that back and forth and make sure my calendar is good. And don't be afraid to say no. It, that's a big thing too. Don't be afraid to say no. A lot of times I want to help every single person, but there is a time <laughs> where I have to say, I have to say, no, unfortunately, I can't have a jam session at this time. I have other obligations, right? Because mm -hmm. it's so important to know your boundaries and know when it's okay to, to step back and, and that's fine. Yeah. One of my favorite inspirations um, is a man who some of you may know, big name, Robin Sharma, um, also Canadian. So that makes me excited as well. And he's got this great book that I highly recommend for everybody called um, The Great Hero Manifesto. And it's this idea that we all have this inner kind of hero inside of us. And he talks about this really brilliant concept um, called like the, the three pillars. And it talks about like as a stool. And we talk, so we talk about mindset a lot. That's a common thing people hear, right? You got to have a strong mindset. You got to have your mindset figured out. But he includes two other ones. He includes what's called heart set and soul set. And I think that's kind of what you're talking about there as well. And it's like you can't have... You have to have those things in alignment and you have to look after each of those things like a three-legged stool. Because if you True. stop looking after one of those things, that stool is going to become unbalanced and eventually it's going to fall over. So mindset's important, but you do have to be aware, oh, like my heart set's slipping a little bit here. I need to make sure I'm spending time with my family. I'm spending time with those I love. Oh, my soul set's starting to go. I need to do something for me. I need to make sure that I'm doing something that I'm passionate about as well so that you have that, that balance in life. And it sounds like you hit that, that really well. So kudos to that, man. You're, you're doing a brilliant job there. And we talked about balance a little bit and I was doing a little bit of kind of research before this interview to make sure that I had some, some kind of information about you and you have this beautiful post on LinkedIn and it was really, really powerful. So you and your girlfriend have differing opinions on religion. And this is really interesting because I'm a huge advocate of the idea that it's not and, or it's both. And you guys are doing that really well. So if you, if you don't mind sharing that story about how you guys have navigated you being Jewish and her being very much Catholic and kind of what the, the good that's come out of those, that, that balance. Yeah. Thanks for bringing that up. I love to share that. And Elizabeth says here uh, that balance can be so hard. It's something that she's got as a new year's resolution uh, and Lynch learning to say no. So uh, I love that, Elizabeth. Yes, that's a great uh, New Year's resolution. I love seeing that. And uh, Matt Allen says kudos. And Nora says every time you say no to something or someone, you are saying yes to something or someone else. I love that. Yep. Flipping that switch and, and taking the no with the yes. Great. I love that. So, uh, yes, Matt, founder of Kudos. Yes, good good plug right there. I love that. Yes, Matt's a great guy, too. We just recently connected, so I love that. Um, but back to what you were saying before about the two religions. So, funny story. I'll kind of kind of throw it back to four years ago when I, when I first met uh, Erica. And um, we met on Match, and she was getting ready. It was right around Christmas time, and she was getting ready to celebrate Christmas with her family, right? And I told her I was Jewish, and we were celebrating Hanukkah, but... I had never been super religious myself. Like, 
I was raised that way. We celebrate Hanukkah, Yom Kippur, Rosh Hashanah, all those things. But you know, I'm not super religious in, in what I do. But um, for her, her religion is a big thing as a Catholic, right? I mean, we got things all over the house, prayers and stuff like that that she's got on the wall. And it's great. I love it. Um, but when I first met her and we started going on dates, she was very hesitant to get involved with me because her thing was when she gets married one day and she gets serious with somebody, she wanted someone to share the same faith as her, right? Um, which is understandable. People feel like that sometimes. And she wanted to know if I would convert. And I said, well, you know, that's not really an option for me. This is who I am. And this is what I, what I, what I enjoy my, my faith as well. Right. So we ended up getting closer with each other and yeah, it's, we had some tough times with each other, just deciding how we were going to do this whole multi relate, you know, religion thing. And, and did she want to stay with me? Well, her stepdad, um, bless his heart, um, got involved one day and she thought that th her parents weren't going to be happy with us being together. So, um, he came over and said, you know what, Erica, like I'm happy with whoever, you, you know, whoever you love and whoever you want to be with religion doesn't matter at that point. It's all about what you feel inside for the person and you make the other things work if you really care about that person. So she was drawn back to it and it was awesome. It was kind of like a light bulb hitting both our heads to say, you know what, this is what we want. And it's okay that we that we both appreciate two different things. So, you know, eventually we had Olivia, um, who's now two years old, and uh, it's been great. We have the understanding where Olivia can be raised Catholic, and that's fine. She can, uh, she got baptized, and that's how we're raising her. But with the understanding that I'm okay to teach her all the Jewish holidays that daddy celebrates and that daddy, you know, feels about. Uh, so she gets the best of both worlds. So I'm teaching her everything about Hanukkah. We're lighting all the candles this time of year. Uh, we're going to celebrate Christmas tomorrow. We got the Christmas tea tree and presents under the tree. And yeah, it's been great. We have this understanding where she can learn both things. And, and yesterday we asked her on, on FaceTime because she's at her grandparents' house. We said, who's coming on Sunday? And she said, Jesus, Jesus's birthday. And I thought she was going to say Santa Claus, like kids would say, right? So <laughs> I just love that she's learning about both these religions and she's getting this hands-on mentality at a two-year-old level. It's, it's amazing how fast she's learning and, and we're loving every minute of it and we're proud parents because of it. Yeah, that's really impressive. I think, especially in the day and age we live in where, like I said, I think we're really driven to feel like we have to choose sides on something. If you were to try to tell people that, you know, Oh, me and you know, my significant other have differing religious opinions, but we, we make it work and we have a kid who does both things. It seems like this wild idea, but it's totally not. It's totally fine. I think we're fed so much information that we should live either on this far extreme or on this far an extreme. And if somebody is in either of those positions or has an opinion on one of those sides, that it's all the way over. Right. But so much of life is, is actually lived in that middle part, right? The, the right. togetherness. And I think what you're doing brings it to another level. You're like, no, let's grab the good of everything that's around us and yeah. use it. Right. Cause why not? It's there. You don't need to make a, an issue about it. So kudos to you guys for that. That's absolutely incredible. Yeah. And I think that in more ways than ones, like, you know, the religions get intertwined in a lot of different ways anyways. Um, so it's great to just bring it all together and, uh, you know, just kind of have the best of both worlds. So yeah, I love it. And I see, uh, some funny, some stuff in here with a LinkedIn user. That's, uh, uh, oh, let's see. Uh, Nora said, Jamie, I was raised both as well. I joke and call myself a cashew. I love that. That's awesome. And cashews are one of my favorite nuts, by the way. So that's awesome. <laughs> um, LinkedIn user. I know who this is. I can't see the name, but I know it's Roxanne uh, Tran because she's the only one who calls me a twinsy. So I know it's her. Um, and she says, is marriage in your 2023 agenda? Okay, let's not give uh, Eric any ideas at this point, but you never know. It might be. I don't know. I don't want to guarantee. I don't want to make that announcement here on Freeman's show, but you never <laughs> know. It's like it's like I'm being drafted to a team or something, you know. But no, we'll never know. And uh, yes, she'll be in Chicago too. So, um, yeah, no, I love it. It's just it's great. This time of year is is, is awesome, and uh, I just love learning as much as I can about um, her Catholic religion as well. There's many things I didn't know until I met her. Do you guys have any? You guys have any special, you kind of maybe unique Christmas traditions that you're starting now with Olivia, because of this this dual relation, uh, dual religion thing that's going on? Like, is there kind of some fun stuff that you guys get to do? 
Um, I think the Hanukkah aspect, to be honest with you, is, is neat because now her parents are getting involved and they're buying her eight little gifts for Hanukkah, which her parents never did that. So, and they're learning the, when we do the, the Hanukkah prayer, uh, they've been kind of learning the words to it and stuff like that. So I think that's really neat. They've never done that before. And we just started doing this year, the whole elf on the shelf thing, uh, <laughs> which uh, people have seen my post, you know, our elf's name is Tootsie and we've been, uh, putting her around different spots and every morning when uh, olivia wakes up she comes up and she says where's tootsie daddy where's tootsie and she wants to run and find her and see what uh, shenanigans she's getting into so it's a lot of fun you know these traditions are great and uh, we're just trying to warm her up to santa claus now because she's a little a little scared of santa but i think a lot of kids are at this age too so yeah that's a good point i do i do remember kind of being Maybe it's alarming that somebody's going to like break into your house and leave random stuff under your tree. I could see that being alarming as a kid, right? You're like, wait right. a minute, hold on. Right. That's not Coming supposed to TV. happen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Is there any other kind of, so I've never been and I'll fully admit that I don't have a lot of knowledge behind, um, behind Hanukkah and stuff like that. Is there any sort of unique um, Hanukkah t- traditions that you really like? You know what? I don't know if there's any traditions that I really like about it. I mean, I just love the saying the prayer every night, uh, lighting the candles, knowing it's for uh, the festival of lights and it's eight days that we celebrate it. Um, you know, dreidels are fun too as well. It's kind of spinning them around and learning about those type of things. Um, the songs are fun, you know, like Oh Hanukkah, Oh Hanukkah, light the menorah. I mean, there's a lot of cool things and traditions that we do that are so similar to uh, to Christmas time too, with all the songs and the different traditions with Santa coming down the chimney. I mean, you know, it's it's just it's just kind of great because everything's in such a positive light, and uh, you know, every just everyone just looks happy to this like looks for happiness this time of year, and that's the best part about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's really cool that you're combining the best of, of both of those things into an incredibly powerful thing, which kind of again will lead me into what I, another thing I wanted to talk about, which is that incredible thing that happens when you bring together positive individuals and you put them in the same space together, and you go, "What can we do? How can we change the world?" What can we do for the better? So I do want to ask about another initiative you've got going on because apparently you're not doing enough yet. (laughs) You've got this really cool thing happening with um, getting school supplies for, for kids in Nigeria. So if you mind talking about that a little bit. Yeah, so let me kind of start a uh, backstory on that. So for anyone who doesn't know uh, Zion Inogieru, um, he's one of my friends I met on here from Nigeria. And he calls himself Mr. Positive Energy. And he's somebody I've met. Uh, and I think he was, a, yeah, he was a guest on your show as well at one point, right, Freeman? I think, he hasn't, he oh, hasn't been, been yet, no. Okay. No, he's, he's on the schedule, though. <laughs> okay, awesome. I love it. Yeah, but he's a great guy. Uh, and he's always bringing positive energy. And I've met him through Social Saturday. And every Friday, we do an event now that he started called the Positive Energy Audio Room. Um, and it's me, him, uh, any, um, Isa, and Simona. There's five of us. And we do this room every Friday where people can come together in the audio room and share stories of positivity, how they overcame hardships, um, just some words of wisdom and just spreading cheer to other people in the room. And we have a different topic every week. And we have a meditation session usually in the morning from our friend Lydia. And it's just great. It goes an hour, hour and a half long. And everybody's just spreading stories around and coming up on stage and wanting to talk to people. And this past Friday, we sang Christmas songs on holiday songs to everybody, which was great. And Zion is now starting an initiative that we're all part of um, where we're giving school supplies and raising money uh, for school supplies for children in Nigeria at schools out there. So we're raising money for backpacks, rulers, pens, markers, all that type of stuff that, that kids need in school. And we haven't started an actual link yet, but we're kind of working out the details right now. But more to come on that. Uh, I'd love to have anybody that wants to help out. Um, we're looking to reach out to 15, uh, 1,500 children if we can uh, in schools out there. And it's just a great initiative because, you know, children are the future. Obviously, we want to make sure that they're well prepared when they go into school and they have the supplies that they need to get the education that they need. Yeah, we're so we so often, you know, can be blinded by where we live and the fortunes that we have and forget that um not everybody sort of has those stepping stones, right? And it's I think it's so important that you guys are taking that initiative and doing that thing. Especially I uh, actually I was in your guys's positive room yesterday. Uh it's amazing. I think it's incredible if if everybody had the chance to I highly recommend going to check it out. And you always encourage people really well to get on stage, talk about something about them and very interactive, which I think is very special. Um, 
but I did, I talked on there a little bit about how we are very much in the season of giving right now. Yes. Right. So this is a great time to remember that not everybody has it maybe as easy as we have, or other people might be struggling with something like that. So it's really important to, you know, do what you can to give, whether it be your time, whether it be your finances, whether it just be a simple um, warming message to somebody that you, you care deeply about, really important to, to give. I think there's a huge benefit to giving in life more than, more than the getting. It's, it's all about giving, right? Uh, yeah. As I'm sure you're very much aware of. So I am curious too. So the audio room, I definitely have to get Zion on here because I need to ask him this question too. Was that something you guys co-created? Was it something that Zion had started and he brought you on? What's what's the story behind that? Yeah, so that was something that Zion actually created himself and he had brought on a few hosts with him and uh, I've checked out the audio room before and I, I loved what he was doing with it and it kind of echoed with the values and sentiments that I try to do on LinkedIn as well with some of my content and whatnot. And I reached out to him and said, hey, Zion, you know, we've been connected for a for a bit now. I love what you're doing with this audio room. If you ever need another co-host, I'd love to get on and share my stories as well and just spread positivity to others. And he said, let me check with my host, make sure we're good to bring you on. And he came back and uh, took a few more minutes than normal. I started thinking, oh, well, maybe he doesn't want me on his show. But <laughs> then it, he came back and said, yeah, you know what? I, I, I would love to have you on. It'd be great to hear your perspective on things. And he brought me onto the team. And ever since we've been doing it every week and I've just been really happy to be a part of this. It's just been amazing, you know, to do this during the week on a Friday and see how many people have been joining and getting people from all areas of the world, all walks of life to come in here. I mean, you got people from here, the United States, they're hosting, you got United Kingdom and one of our hosts from Spain, uh, you've got Zion from Nigeria. Um, the fact that people, all these people could come together through LinkedIn to have this show together is just amazing. I mean, it's just, it's great. It's mind blowing. And I just love what he's doing out there and, and what we're trying to do every week and then the movement that we're trying to accomplish. Yeah. It's interesting. I think that really goes to show how important it is to sort of, to put yourself out there, right. To have those, um, to see those opportunities and go, how can I get involved in this? And just to ask, right. Like you just did. You said, Hey, you know, I really like what you're doing here. You know, can I, can I help in any way? Can I come on and host? Can I do something? Those op grab it, finding and seeing those opportunities and just taking them and taking that leap is so important so vitally important definitely definitely i agree and we got some more comments in here i think i see here uh jack says awesome presentation when can i interview <laughs> <laughs> uh, i love it yes jack we'll have to connect i think we are connected i'll double check that i love it uh, but, uh roxanne says you better lock her down asap you know i don't know if eric is paying you on the side roxanne but uh you know she can send you the check in the mail i love it though how supportive you are of, of her and uh and us i appreciate that um jack says great text and verbal content i have numerous contacts in nigeria I do too. You know, side note here. I mean, Nigeria shows up on LinkedIn. I love it. I mean, there's so many people that want to that reach out to me and send me messages. Um, and it's great. I see so many people on LinkedIn um, from that country, which is outstanding. So I love it. And then Roxanne says, how about making holiday cookies, cheap ones, even if unemployed, like giving neighbors sugar cookies between Christmas and New Year's to spread gratitude and connect. That's a great idea. I'd have to get people's physical addresses to do something like this. So it just depends on if people gave that to me. But um, yeah, I mean, who doesn't like sugar? I mean, I like chocolate chip. That's my flavor. But sugar cookies is good, too. Um, mm. And that's a great idea as well. I mean, and I hope you're all if you're listening in, I hope if you're cooking for the holidays or you're, you're making some good sweets and uh, some cookies and uh, and enjoying your, uh, you know, your baking for the weekend. So, yeah, I definitely left. My, I definitely let my diet slip a little bit come the holidays. You know what I mean? I think we all do a little. Oh, yeah. Let's be honest here. Uh, I just had a, my lovely, uh, our neighbors just came over and dropped off a little gift basket of, of some oh. baked goods as well, which was really sweet of them. Um, so I, you know, I encourage people to do that as well, right? If you've got a few bits of extra baking, I know that most of us do, you make, you know, a couple batches of the cookies and you're like, I don't need to eat 36 chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> uh, maybe make a little gift basket, you know, bring it over to your neighbor's house, right? You don't, even if you don't want to interact with them, I get it. Just maybe leave it on the doorstep, knock on the door and, and give them a little kind of dine and dash with some cookies. Yes. The thought that counts. A trend there. That'd be pretty cool. Love exactly. It. It's the thought that counts. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, absolutely. Incredible, incredible stuff there. Um, with the, how did, did so I want to ask a bit more about like how kind of doing positive stuff started with you. Was it something that you started like early in life that you realized that you like doing? Cause obviously you're doing a lot of it with the positive stuff that you're doing now with Zion and that group and, and Annie and all them. 
the job um, jam sessions with Jamie is a very, another very positive, impactful thing. Is that something that's always been happening in your life? And how did you identify that this is something that you wanted to do? Yeah, great question. So I'll tell you kind of how in my life growing up, uh, I was raised, I have two brothers and two sisters younger than me, and my mom raised us all as a single parent. So bless her heart, five kids. I don't know how she did it, but uh, kudos to her mom for listening, uh, you know, did a great job. So, um, but growing up, it was my mom and my grandpa, who was my father figure in my life for most of my life. And, you know, he raised me to just be a, be a good guy growing up, be great to people and you'll get great things in return. Um, you know, don't always, don't always think about yourself, think about others and, and the hardships that they have and just knowing how I grew up and seeing how my mom struggled and uh, you know, we were on food stamps at one point uh, if I'm being reason you know if I'm being serious with you guys and then you know having some serious conversation it's just I saw the hardships and growing up I you know now that I have a daughter and whatnot and being positive to other people like I want people to live their best life, right? I want people to, to see the positive in them and realize that when you get down um, and things are going rough, that things can always be a lot worse. And sometimes when you hit rock bottom um, and you feel like there's no place to go, the only way you can really go is up, right? And the only way you can do it, and, and it's, it's all about what you do. And that pot, once again, we talk about that mindset, right? It's all about that positive mindset um, and how you think about the situation you're in and how resilient you are that once you get knocked down, how do you respond to those things? So when I came back onto LinkedIn, I saw so many people making posts on here and talking about how, you know, I'm struggling to figure out how I'm going to pay my bills next month because I was laid off or how am I going to pay my mortgage? I really need a job ASAP. I have children to feed and all that stuff resonated with me because I know growing up how hard it was for my mom to put things on the table and make ends meet for us. So I just wanted to be a voice for those people and respond to them and say, you know what, things are going to get better. I'm here for you. If you want to talk, here's my phone number. Give me a call. Let's have a conversation. Like nothing's off the table. I want to be there for these people. And I just want others to know that community comes not just from those who support you in person, but community comes from everybody on LinkedIn. I mean, if we've seen anything on this platform, it's that we all pick each other up when people get down and we never want to kick anybody when they're down. We want to lift those people up. So that was, I mean, this is something that I've always felt was positivity was a huge part of my life. And I just always think that things can always be worse when they're tough on my end and that somebody out there always has it harder than I do. And I, all I can do is be the, a light in that person's life. And hopefully good karma comes back around to myself. Yeah. And I truly believe it does. Um, that, that circle of karma coming back in and that when you tend to give help, you generally see either help come back or some sort of reciprocating factor in return. Right. I think it's so amazing. Um, I want to touch more on that. I do want to just give a quick shout out to Alan again, who, uh, keep shouting his kudos out. Kudos again. I love you both. I mean, kudos is a great name for a business. It's so easy to drop in places. It is. It I is. feel like I should be sponsoring this. And I mean, Matt, if you want to shoot me a message yeah. on LinkedIn, we can definitely chat about something like that. Um, I'd, I'd happily give you a little kudos logo somewhere for a few episodes. There you um, go. And the hashtag we are community. It's so important. And that's what I wanted to get back into, into here. So, uh, thanks Matt for kind of yes. bringing me all the way through that. It is so much about there's that beautiful saying, it takes a village to raise somebody. I am always so grateful with the way that I grew up. I grew up in um, very similar as well. We necessarily didn't always have a ton of money, but I met a lot of people and a lot of inspiration from those individuals I met. And it really was that community, that village that sort of definitely when I look back at it, sort of made me into who I am kind of yeah. today. So I think that there's a, there's a lot in that. Um, and it's, again, it's a give and take with that community. Right. And sometimes you're, like you said, sometimes you're in, you're in the position where you're, you're the one getting at that point in time, because maybe you're at the bottom and you need that hand up. Yeah. And, but then when you are in the position to give back, it's important to then return those type favors. And I think That's people true. who have been on the receiving end of how impactful that can really be. Those are the people that when they get up to those positions, they're like, Hey man, I got to reach down and help those up others up the mountain with me as well. One of my favorite memories from when I was a kid with that. So I grew up, like I said, didn't have a ton of money. And when we moved first moved to uh, a new location, because my mom had this crazy wild idea, which I'm not going to get into right now, but <laughs> moved to this new town. Um, and we actually lived in two big army canvas tents for a whole year in Canada. Um, and one was our living quarters and one was our kitchen. And we lived down in just maybe five or so minutes outside of town. 
And it was at Christmas time, weirdly enough, that I remember somebody came down and dropped off a hamper of food for us. Um, now we had food. I'm not going to say that we were, we were starving, right? We were comfortable. I have really, really good memories of, of that time in my life, even though we were living very simply, it was, we didn't really have electricity even didn't have TV radio and all that stuff, but I was, I have very good memories of that time in my life, but I do remember that person coming down and giving us a Christmas hamper at Christmas time. And I was five or six years old at this point in time. So it really goes to show you how impactful that can be to people that even now, decades later, I can, I can look back and remember that. So I just want to let people know that when you do those little things, they may not seem like a lot to you. Um, and may not even feel like they're that much out of your way. Like if you're like, Oh, I'm going to pay for the person behind me's coffee. Right. Well, that person behind you could be a struggling mom looking after five kids who just got their coffee paid for them. And they're like, Holy crap, that changed my whole day. My whole outlook has changed. Um, and I'm going to, you know, be better when I get home from my kids because now I have this positive experience. It's insane. The amount of power that can have. Absolutely incredible. Um, yeah, you're absolutely right. And yeah, no, go ahead. No, I was going to say, yeah, I was just going to say, you know, I love how you say that people who have, you know, who have hit rock bottom and maybe they've gotten help from somebody else um, when they do get out of that hole and they're feeling like their feet are back on their ground. I've talked to a lot of people who've said, you know what, I just can't wait to get back to that point because I'm going to give back to other people as well. And I know how people helped me out when I was down and I want to pay it forward to those people. And it's always something I'm going to remember that they helped me out uh, and then I'm going to help somebody else out the line. So it's all a chain reaction. And that's the whole point behind this pay it forward thing, right? Is that you may not, even if you can't help out right away down the line, maybe six months from now, you know, eight months from now, you're better in a better position than when you were. And now you can donate some money to a good cause, or you can help out somebody that's, that's struggling. And it's all about that power of just how that chain goes and how we can all help each other out to get back on our feet. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. With that in mind too, we've talked a little bit about mindset and stuff like that. I am curious on what are some of your tips that people can do to kind of get back up on their feet? What's some things that maybe you started doing as well that really started to shift kind of, how you thought about things and how you did things and some things that you keep in mind even now. Yeah. So I think what it comes down to is if you're in a, in a, in a tough time and you know, you're trying to get back on your feet, maybe you, like you said, maybe you just lost your job and things are rough now with money wise and whatnot. Like I said, all you can do is stay consistent with the process. Just believe in the process, get back, you know, try to get back on your feet the best way you can start reaching out to other people and start interacting with others and just see if anybody can maybe help you out with something, or maybe you guys can help each other out with something. Um, just speak up, right? You never know who's on here, who's going to be able to help you out with anything you need. I mean, there's so many people that I've talked to in this community on LinkedIn that all have their own niches and all different things that they're really good at. uh, And they've all been able to help me out with things. Sometimes they've introduced me to someone who's been able to help me on my journey um, with this positivity. Or maybe you reach out to a recruiter if you're looking for a job and that recruiter can't help you out, but they say, hey, you know what? I have somebody who I think might be able to based on your background. So once again, it's all about just talking to people and just believing in yourself And realizing that things are going to get better, that this too shall pass. Um, You know, if you're a job seeker, you're not going to be unemployed forever. I promise you that. I can tell you that with with flying colors that you will find something. And even though it may take longer, sometimes it does take longer um, to get to what you want. Right. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon in a lot of different ways. So just keep keep being positive. Keep showing support for others out there that are in the same boat or maybe struggling as well. uh, And form a community with those people where you guys push each other on both ends to, to really rise above what you're going through. So I think that's the most important thing too, is that you hold each other accountable and you push each other to get to where you want to go and, and out of that, out of that hard hardship that you're going through. Yeah. And I think you, you put that so well, I think a really important thing with that too is putting yourself out there, right? Asking for help. I know so many people who are like, Oh, I don't want to ask for this or ask for help on this. It's like people are a lot more, helpful than we realize they are. Most of us want to do good in this world, right? Um, So ask people, right? Reach out to a a mentor or somebody that you know that's in the field. Ask them questions about it. Ask them for a referral, right? People love helping people. I think we often are maybe showing that that's not the case, but it really is. And I know when I've given that that advice to people, um, they've reached out to people and like, oh, wow, that really can kind of change the way that it it is. Because and I, I love this post from Matt is that people all need to be healthier, wealthier, and happier uh, and doing what we can to free people from from stress and difficulties. 
it's one of my big benefits of doing not benefits one of my big reasons for doing what i do is that i believe that we all have that ability to live that happier life and it's important with what he's saying as well the being free of stress because as we were all very much aware stress is a massive health impact it's one of the biggest killers in the world and the health impacts from stress can be very long lasting and we don't necessarily need to have that that stress in our lives if we can begin to switch the way we look at things change our daily habits do things differently so that we can live longer happier and weirdly enough what comes with living happier is generally more successful as well like you're saying even just the difference between being positive or negative when you're looking for a job can change the whole outpack uh, the whole outlook of an impact of, of your job search so yeah super good yeah and you need your health i mean you need your health because obviously without health you don't have anything right so if you're putting in all these hours and doing things and you don't remember to take a step back and just you know you don't want to experience burnout if you don't have health and you're laying in bed and you're sick i mean you can't do anything you want at that point so you got to really worry about your own health first um and know that when you need to take a step back and you need to get recharge those batteries it's super important because I, I've been burned out before at times and I've learned from it. Uh, and yeah, being under the weather and being sick health wise is never a fun feeling at all, right? You got you want to make sure you always recharge. Yeah, a hundred percent. I think it's so important. And then again, a quick shout out here with with Matt and and Don here having a lovely little chat here. Uh, Don says, "I think I think Matt wants a microphone." Um, and Matt answered beautifully. He says, "I don't need a mi- microphone. We all have our own power. We all have our own gifts that we're bringing." Um, and that's what really makes that community strong. So man, you guys have been fire in the chat yeah. today. So awesome to you guys for, for everything that you're doing in the chat and for the community and everybody that's in this room here. I did want to take a moment here. So interesting story. We mentioned earlier on in this broadcast here about, um, the fact that you guys in your positivity room, you guys had people singing songs. Uh, you started the Christmas carols off actually with, um, Frosty the snowman, which was really cool. I think we had seven or eight other people sing during that time. And some people were amazing. There was definitely some time that had some goosebumps. Um, Naomi was one of them. I know she is in the middle of something, so might not be listening today. Um, but there were some people that I literally got goosebumps when they were singing. And there's also a really good point in there I want to bring up as well, that it's really important to get yourself out of your comfort zone. And you mentioned that when you first started talking, actually, before you sang yesterday. You said, this isn't something I normally do. I have no backing for the sound music. I'm just going to do something that makes me feel uncomfortable so that I can get more and more used to being uncomfortable. So with that being said, taking a note from Jamie's book, I am going to uh, break out of my comfort zone and, um, and sing a little song here that I think has some really powerful connotations behind it as well. So um, without further ado, I suppose, you got this. Let's go. Man, how did you smash this so well yesterday? Whew. You got it, man. All I'm right. supporting you. Let's do it. It's all about <laughs> you, man. Let's go. All right. Good King Wenceslas doth luck. Oh, man. Good King Wenceslas looked out on, on the feast of Stephen when the snow lay round about deep and crisp and even. Brightly shone the moon that night, though the froth was cruel when a poor man came in sight. Gathering winter fuel, hither page and stand by me, if thou knows it's telling, yonder peasant who is he, where and what his dwelling, sire he lives a goodly hence underneath the mountain, right against the forest fence, by St. Agnes fountain. Bring me flesh and bring me wine, bring me pine logs hither. Thou and I shall see him dine when we bear them thither. Page and monarch, forth they went, forth they went together. Through the wo- rude winds wild lament and the bitter weather. Sire, the night is darker now and the wind blows stronger. Fails my heart, I know not how, I can go no longer. Mark my footsteps, my good page, tread thou in them boldly. Thou shalt feel the winter's rage, freeze thy blood less coldly. In his master's steps he trod, where the snow lay dinted. Heat was in his very sod, which the saint had printed. Therefore, Christian men, be sure, wealth or rank possessing, 
Ye who now shall bless the poor, shall yourselves find blessing. Hey, wow. I didn't realize that song was that long. Holy yeah, cow, that's really amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. And you got all the words not down packed. That was wow. I cheated. I read them off. I cheated. No, that's um, okay. It's okay to read them off. I didn't realize that there was that many verses, and that was amazing. Good job. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. It really <laughs> goes to show, um, you know, it's funny because our talk was so much about how giving gives back and all that fun stuff. And that's the message that I believe that song really tells is that, you know, regardless of your station of where you are, what you do, if you have the ability to impact somebody else, you, you really should. So, yeah. yeah. So happy holidays to everybody. Um, I know we got five minutes left here. I can't let Freeman be the only one that sings a song <laughs> on camera. Uh, it's the first one I've done as well, too. But, you know, tis the season. And once again, just want to wish everybody a happy holiday. And thank you for joining in. Um, D says on here, uh, or let's see, Pat Dudar actually said, um, well said points, Jamie and Freeman. Lots to reflect on. Yes, thank you so much, Pat. I appreciate that. And, and thank you for joining in today as well. Uh, D Cockra. Um, Awesome. Been a huge supporter of mine too, as well. She says great advice about taking care of yourself because health is everything. Health is wealth. That's what uh, Matt Allen said. And Matt's everyone's saying, go, go, go Freeman. And <laughs> Sing it, man. And Dawn gives you a heart emoji. I love it. Uh, yeah. Wow. Look at it. Hey, if, if you know, you might have a, a career in singing too. You never know. Hey, you got a lot of fans here. American Idol might be next on your, uh, on your Oof, agenda. I don't know about that. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to sing a quick uh, song here, uh, a little bit easier in terms of uh, words, but I'm going to do Let It Snow here. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and sing it, all right? All right, here we go. Oh, the weather outside is frightful, but the fire is so delightful. And since we've no place to go, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Man, it doesn't show signs of stopping, and I've brought some corn for popping. The lights are turned way down low. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. When we finally kiss goodnight, how I hate going out in the storm. But if you really hold me tight, all the way home I'll be warm. And the fire is slowly dying. And my dear, we're still goodbying. But as long as you love me so, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. When we finally kiss goodnight, how I hate going out in the storm. But if you really grab me tight, all the way home I'll be warm. Oh, the fire is slowly dying. And my dear, we're still goodbying. But as long as you love me so, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. There we go. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Well done, man. (laughs) Awesome. Dude, so good. So good. (laughs) Now we are, yeah, we are coming up to the hour. And there is a few things I want to mention still in here. So for if anybody's got time. I highly recommend sticking around because there's a few other questions I want to drop in here quick um, for Jamie. But before we get to that, it's interesting that you started this this thing with the Christmas Carol things um, because I have a, a family tradition that my my mom starts. So if I may or may not be watching this, if you are, you'll totally understand. Uh, and thank you for this. So we actually on Christmas Eve, and this is why it feels so right, on Christmas Eve every year, We sing Christmas carols. And my mom had a massive booklet of Christmas carols. So when you brought that up, I was like, I have to. It's Christmas Eve. I have my podcast. It's landing on Christmas Eve. And Jamie's like, hey, we should sing Christmas carols. I'm like, I I can't not. It's part of the the Christmas edition of my family. So thank you for for that because it's been absolutely amazing. Um, Of course. Matt says, I just just want to say that I hope we all have some wonderful Christmas memories this, this, this year. Um, including memories of this awesome show. So thank you, Matt, as well for, for what you've been doing. So, and yes. Jamie, you got a ton of stuff in there as well, support for your amazing song. So, so well done. <laughs> thank you. Everybody. Well done there. Now, before we wrap up here, there are two sets of questions I want to ask you and I ask everybody on the show, these questions. So what are three things that you do every day that you think help you lead a more positive life? 
Sure. So three things I do every day um, when I look to lead a positive life. Um, well, when I wake up in the morning, you know, obviously and say hi to my family, my girlfriend, my daughter here. Um, you know, I give my daughter a hug and it's a nice long hug when she comes out of her crib. Um, and I say, how did you sleep? And she says, good. And, uh, you know, I always change her diaper and everything. And that's just just waking up in the morning and putting two feet on the ground and saying good morning to everybody around me and starting our day. Um, that's the first step I do to, uh, you know, to kind of lead that positive life and um, just get that positive start to my day, right? Knowing that everybody's around me and we're all ready to start um, our day every morning, right? Um, the second thing I do to leave a, lead a positive life is just communicate on LinkedIn with people, honestly. Uh, for me, it's just communicating and engaging and seeing how people are doing and um, seeing how I can help them out and checking in with folks who are engaging with my content and my posts and just reaching out and, and seeing if they need anything from me. Um, for that, I, that helps me to be positive too and try to see how others are doing and just, once again, lend a helping hand and just let people know that I'm there for the week to help them out, right? Um, and then the third thing that I do to lead a positive life is when I go out and I'm running errands and things like that, or if I'm just doing things out and about, like I will always make it a point to do something nice for somebody outside that I don't know. So it could just be something as simple as opening the door for somebody. Uh, this time of year, it could be just saying happy holidays to somebody in front of me that's buying groceries. Um, there's just a lot of different ways that I feel like we can make an impact on people that in turn will make people positive. Maybe you comment on somebody's outfit and you say, or their accessories you say, Hey, that's a nice watch you got there, you know? And now, Oh yeah, thanks. I bought it from here. And now you have a conversation like, I always try to make it a point when I go out to try to do positive things for other and then in return, like I said, it reflects on me. So I would say those are three things um, that I try to do every year to maintain that positive mindset that I have. That was amazing. Awesome. Yeah. So start your day off well with, you know, being grateful, welcoming the day. I love that you, you know, you added including hugging, hugging your daughter in there. So important to, to share love with those we, we really care about to communicating with those around you. I think that's really important, right? Get engaging with your community. Yep. And doing something extra for some somebody else, somebody random. I think those are three incredibly positive things that you do daily. So yeah. awesome there. Next set of question. Next question is: What are three things that you think are the most important parts of living a more positive life? Ooh, that's a great question. Most important things about. Uh, well, I think the first thing, honestly, if I have to tell you, if to to what was the question to live a positive life? You said right. Yeah. Like, what's the most important three things about being more positive? Once again, I think the first thing you got to start with is your mindset. Um, you know, we talked about that a lot on this on this call here and or on this live here. And you really just got to get into that mind that, you know, when things are rough, all you have to do is have a positive mindset of thinking and just look to the things that could happen later in the day and the things that you have to look forward to. And the reason that uh, you're here every day when you wake up and you open your eyes in the morning, it's a new day to to really win the day. It doesn't matter what happened the day before then you get another chance at life. Right. Um, the second thing to have a, to just be, you know, in a positive mood is once again, it just comes down to connecting with those around you. And for those who are being positive, um, reach out, talk to your family around you. If you, if you are having a rough go at things, um, talk to anybody in your family that maybe you can speak to and just, just say hi to them. Right. A lot of times we don't speak to, you know, we don't speak to everybody sometimes on a regular basis. And this reminds me that I should probably give a call to my mom uh, and check in and just see how think how she's doing and just hear her voice and see how things are going for the holidays. Right. Because um, once again, that can put both people in a good mood as well. And, and just once again, get you to thinking positive. And then the, the third thing, once again, what it comes down to, uh, I would say is, Probably once again, just commuting with communicating with people maybe that you're not familiar with. I know it's kind of the same mm. answers as the one before, um, but it's so true. Like it doesn't have to just be friends that you know. I mean, all these people that are in these comments here and that are that are communicating with us and saying hi to us, like these are people that I've never met in person, but I feel a strong connection to, and I feel like they're family to me because uh, I've talked to them on a regular basis on LinkedIn. I see their posts, I get involved, and I, I get to know their life better through what they talk about. So um, once again, that that creates that brings back memories of things in my life that were positive and just kind of gets me thinking on a whole other mindset. And I just love seeing all the people in here that are communicating with us and just responding to us and just seeing everybody talk about things that they enjoy on LinkedIn and things that are important to them. Man, so good. So definitely start get that mindset figured out, figure out how to, you know, get into a positive mindset throughout the day 
connect with your community. I love that that came up twice. I think it's really important. And then reach out to those that you may not know, right? Yeah. And I think those tie really well to what you do on a daily basis as well. So, man, thanks so much, Jamie. I really appreciate you coming on. Um, I know we're just over the hour, but that's all right. It's okay. Hey, we can, we can outlive it a little bit. It's exactly, exactly. right. This is a special one. We got to take yes. it a little farther. But I just want to encourage kind of anybody still still watching, anybody listening later, go check out Jamie, um, Jamie Edwards on LinkedIn. Give him a follow. Give him a connection. He's great. If you message him, you need help with job stuff. Definitely fire him a message. Jump on one of his jam sessions with uh, jam sessions with Jamie. The link will be in the description to this. You can book a meeting with him. Have a chit chat. If you're struggling to find work, I'm telling you, Jamie's going to really help you kind of sort that out. You also want to follow him to make sure you catch those positive audio events that he's doing and stay in the loop when he drops some stuff on the donations and stuff like that he plans to do with the night with, with the uh, kids in Nigeria. So, Jamie, thank you for all that you're doing for the community, all that you have done, and I'm sure all that you're going to continue to do. I've really appreciated you having you on here. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, everybody. Happy holidays, and uh, yes, happy holidays to you and your loved ones. Thank you, and let's uh, come into 2023 with a lot of momentum. Let's do it. I love it. Yeah. Thanks so much, guys. Um, just before we wrap up here, if you are looking to find places to get that positive insight and change your positive mindset, my newsletter description will be in the link below as well. It's freemanbeals.substack.com. And it would mean the world for me if you could subscribe to that and follow the podcast as well. It's currently on Spotify, a couple of positivity. This episode will be dropping there a week from now. So if you have family and you're like, man, you guys have really got to hear this. There's some good insight into that. I really recommend you sharing that out to these people as well. You know, share those positive messaging, those positive actions. That's what this is all about is in helping those around us, giving them the information and insights that they might need to move forward in life. So thanks so much guys. And as Jamie so rightfully said, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, happy Hanukkah. I don't know any other religions off the top of my head that I can give it to, but um, go out there spend time with the people you love make some people smile, and most of all, have a great day, everybody. There you go.